Welcome to a table of Laplace transforms. So general idea, um, a lot of uh, functions have integrals that act fairly similarly, right? So a lot of functions, f of t have um, similar techniques for integration. Uh, so for integrating as we did previously for the Laplace transform, integral from zero to infinity of e to the negative st times f of t dt. Right, so for example, we saw in the previous video, so we saw in the previous video, that, um, and again, sorry, this integral was the Laplace transform of that lowercase f of t, right? So in the previous video, we saw that um, the Laplace transform of e to the at was just one over s minus a, uh, was defined for s greater than zero. And so essentially we can find Laplace transform for families of functions and then just have a table so we don't have to repeatedly evaluate these improper intervals. So, we can find the Laplace transform uh, for a variety of different families Oh, I apologize. This should have been s greater than a for where the Laplace transform was defined for e to the at. Um, again, um, we can find the Laplace transform for a variety of different families of functions. And then we can just record what those Laplace transforms should be. So we do not always have to take the improper integral. So, and record the results for later use. So we do not have to repeatedly take um, the same or same type of improper interval. Um, so there are lots of Laplace transform tables are available. Um, I have one included in this set of notes. Um, there are others available. So there are lots of tables of Laplace transforms of standard families of functions. Uh, we will use the table from the book. So as you can see, um, um, this is our sort of initial function. And then we have our Laplace transform. So 
So we showed that for the initial function, just f of t equals one, the Laplace transform was one over s. Uh, similarly, we showed that uh, for their initial function e to the a t, the Laplace transform was one over s minus a. So we uh, found this one in the previous video. So we found Laplace transform of one was equal to one over s for s greater than zero, which is exactly what's on the right there. Um, we also found that the Laplace transform of e to the at was equal to one over s minus a for s greater than a. Again, that's exactly what's on the right. Um, so essentially we have the Laplace transform, oops, let me give myself more space there. So the Laplace transform of e to the at is equal to one over s minus a. Similarly, the Laplace transform of one is equal to one over s. Um, I'm not going to go through and prove all of these various Laplace transforms that we have, um, but there are a variety of Laplace transforms which are considered sort of standard ones to take. Um, some things to keep in mind, your hyperbolic cosine and hyperbolic sine, just a reminder of how those are defined. Hyperbolic cosine. We are looking at E. Well, so hyperbolic cosine of BT, we are looking at E uh, to the BT plus E to the negative BT over two. Hyperbolic sine of BT, uh, we are looking at E to the BT minus E to the negative BT over two, just if you've forgotten how those are defined. So these ones are really just working with exponential functions um, and a sum of two exponential functions. Uh, so if those pop up in your homework, work with them. Uh, you may need to translate it into the exponential functions or you can leave it as cos h, um, depending on the type of question. Again, we have a whole variety of um, functions you can start off with, common functions that appear in differential equations, um, and what their um, Laplace transform is. And then we have a few very useful transformations to work with. So some extremely useful ones. Uh, if we have e to the at times any of the functions already listed in this set, um, you take the Laplace transform of f and then just shift it. Um, so instead of f of s, we have f of s minus a. Um, so again, here, f is just the Laplace transform of lowercase f of t. Right? And then it's just shifted. So an e to the at times our original function appears as a shift a horizontal shift in our Laplace transform. Uh, if we multiply a power of t, t to the k times f of t, uh, it shows up as negative one to the k times the kth derivative uh, of our Laplace transform. So again here, f is the Laplace transform of lowercase f of t. So if we have a function which is a, um, if we're looking at t to the k times any function we know the Laplace transform of, we now know how to find the Laplace transform of t to the k times that. Um, and then if we have a um, horizontal uh, stretch or dilation, so if we have f of some omega times t, um, then that also appears uh, just as a vertical and horizontal stretch or dilation um, of our Laplace transform. So capital F is the Laplace transform of lowercase f of t, uh, once again. The last 
caught few rows so that u of t minus tau, um, this is referring to a step function. We will see those, um, we will see the step functions uh, once we get to section 8.4, I believe. Um, that integral f of tau times g of t minus tau d tau evaluated from zero to t. Um, this is called a convolution. Again, we will see that later as well. Um, so for now, we'll kind of just be working with the things they start and then all of the variety of functions above that uh, we can play around with a bit. Um, and we ultimately, we will be using this table to find our Laplace transforms instead of having to use um, the improper integral definition. So this is a Laplace transform table. <clears throat> 